How do emails, websites, and online payments actually work? It's all powered by TCP IP protocols like HTTP, DNS, FTP, and SMTP, the invisible forces behind every online action. Want to master the protocols that power the internet? In this video, you'll learn how data moves, how to secure it with HTTPS and SSH, and how to become an IT support expert. Ready to control the web? Stick around, it all starts now. In this course, we'll look at different protocols in a TCP IP network. TCP stand for Transmission Control Protocol is one of the main protocols used in a TCP IP network. It is a connection-oriented protocol, that is, a session must be established between two devices in order for them to communicate. This is called a three-way handshake. For example, we have these two PCs, which want to exchange using the TCP protocol. In the first step, the computer will send a message of type SYN. Then, the PC on the other end, the one that receives the SYN packet, will send a message of the SYN ACK type to say that it has received it. And finally, the other PC will also acknowledge receipt of it with an ACK message. And it is only after validating these three steps that the data can be delivered. The most important thing to remember about TCP is that it guarantees the delivery of data. This means that if a packet of data is lost, then TCP will send it back. Now, let's move on to the UDP, which stand for User Datagram Protocol, which is very similar to TCP. Because UDP is also used to send and receive data, except that the main difference with TCP is that UDP is a connectionless protocol. This means that it does not establish a session and therefore cannot guarantee the delivery of data. When a computer sends this data using the UDP protocol, it won't care if the data is received at the other end. Let's change the protocols to DNS, which stand for Domain Name System. This is what makes it possible to resolve domain names into IP addresses. In the world of networks, computers don't have names. Unlike us humans, they use numbers. That is to say, when you enter the google.com address in your browser, the DNS server will search its database to find the IP address that corresponds to this domain name. In fact, the DNS works a bit like a phone book. When you want to find a phone number, well, search for yourself by name and not by number. NAT, Network Address Translation. We will now talk about NAT which allows you to translate a set of IP addresses into another set of IP addresses. Network Address Translation, NAT, is generally used on routers. For example, here we have a small private network consisting of three computers, which uses a set of private IP addresses. Remember, these addresses are not routable on the internet. These three PCs are connected to a switch, and the switch is connected to the router with its public address. The router will take care of the address translation. That is to say, if one of the PCs wishes to communicate with the internet, then its private address will be translated by the public address of the router. Now let's talk about FTP, which is a file transfer protocol. It allows the exchange of files between two computers and more precisely between a server and a client. So, there are several ways to transfer files via FTP. For example, you can use your internet browser or FTP software. It is important to note that FTP is a connection-oriented protocol. So, in your opinion, it uses TCP or UDP? To transfer files, the protocol uses TCP. In the same family of file transfers, we have SFTP, Secure FTP, which is a more secure version of FTP. That is, it adds a layer of security. Data that uses SFTP is encrypted using a secure shell as it is transferred from one point to another. 
This means that sensitive data such as passwords are not sent in the clear. Still in the same family, we have the TFTP Trivial File Transfer Protocol. So, it is not used to transfer files over the internet like FTP does, but rather to send files over the same network. TFTP has no security, and unlike FTP, which uses the TCP protocol for file transfer, TFTP is a connectionless protocol. That is, it uses UDP as its transfer protocol. This time, let's change families, but let's still stay in the protocols. We're going to talk about SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol is used to send emails. The protocol used to receive emails is PIOP filtry. Whenever an email arrives on your mail server, you can retrieve it using the PIOP filtry protocol to download it to your computer. The role of PIOP3 is only to retrieve the email from the email server and then download it to the computer. In general, an application that uses it to retrieve emails from the computer does not leave any copies on the server unless you set it up specifically in the software that manages emails like Microsoft's Outlook. POPIN3 does not take care of any email or folder synchronization unlike IMAP4, which is another protocol used to receive emails. IMAP4 is very similar to POP3 as they are both used to retrieve emails from an email server, except that IMAP has better features. For example, you can access and manage your emails on the server from your local computer. And unlike POP3, IMAP allows you to synchronize emails and folders from the mail server with all your devices. Now let's move on to the HTTP protocol, which is probably the most widely used protocol in the world today. HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol because it is what makes it possible to display web pages on the internet. For example, you will notice that if you only type google.com on your browser, then the word HTTP is automatically added to the beginning of the address. It is therefore the HTTP protocol which allows the WEAB page to be retrieved. So, in HTTP, well, all the information is sent in the clear. That is, the data is not encrypted. No problem if you just browse websites for consultation. But if you have more sensitive data to enter, such as a password or your credit card numbers, well, it wouldn't be prudent to simply use HTTP. This is where the HTTPS, Secure Hypertext Transfer Protocol, protocol comes in. In fact, HTTPS is simply HTTP with the addition of a secure function because it will encrypt the data that circulates. For example, if you go to your bank's website to verify your account, well, you'll notice that an S will be added to the HTTP in the web URL. The small s indicates you have entered a secure website where sensitive data can be transmitted. This type of data will therefore be protected. Telnet Terminal Network We will now talk about the Telnet protocol, which is a program used to access remote servers. It runs directly on a computer and allows remote command lines to be sent. And like... It's not a graphical interface, well, that's actually a very fast tool. But the problem is that it is not secure at all. That is to say, all commands are sent in the clear. This is why, today, it is mainly used to access equipment, which is part of one's own local network, and not on the internet. Now there is a better alternative to Telnet, which is the SSH protocol and stands for Secure Shell. It protects the data that circulates on a network against various attacks. This is very useful if you are sending sensitive information, such as usernames or passwords. In fact, SSH acts as a secure tunnel that forms on the link, which protects against outside threats. SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol. And the last protocol we're going to see is SNMP which is a communication protocol that allows network admins manage equipment, supervise them. 
and even diagnose problems, and all this remotely. Before we end the course, we're going to talk about a logical connection that programs use to exchange information. These are the network ports. These are numbers ranging from 0 to 655535. But don't worry, for the exam, you'll just need to learn a few. Here is a table that represents the port numbers that you will need to know for your CompTIA certificate. Some of these ports are very commonly used, such as Port 80 to display web pages on the internet. The 443 for secure pages, which requires a username and password, even if today most sites are in HTTPS. And we have port 25, which is used to send emails from an email application like Microsoft's Outlook.